frozen. Oh, there we go. We got it. All right, guys. We're back. Sorry about that. My internet decided to uh, have a panic attack, so I apologize. But uh, luckily we didn't miss too much. We, uh, I can't see a couple of bands, but, you know, <laughs> we'll try our best. Uh, <laughs> University of Southern Missouri actually does get Lucian Brom, which is a pretty strong ball lane, especially in the early game, So, which is exactly what you were talking about earlier. But they did give the Urgot pick away again. Yep. Um, I think I think really for Central Missouri to even have a shot in this game, um, they've really got to win the early game and get an advantage through that. Um, <laughs> the Teemo hover. <laughs> I think uh, Koala really loves hovering Teemo. But uh, Cassiopeia picked up that probably will be going mid lane, although it could be a flex pick to the bot lane. You never know with this uh, crazy new meta we have. So, And then yeah. Morgana support is the cover. And Demon Prince uh, used to playing mid lane, so definitely in his repertoire to play Cassiopeia. Uh, picking that early gives them a possible flex, and they can probably see what mid lane uh, that Central Missouri wants to pick up and flex it regardless of what the matchup is so i could see missouri looking picks. for the lissander again but i should go for jace so going hard for the early game actually yep uh, I, th I think they really need to win the early game uh if they want to have a shot definitely just Last game we saw that K State was just better at CSing and just overall playing, and they got a gold lead through that. So, <clears throat> yeah. There's the Graves ban. They do not want to see that champion. I Let won't me be denied. UKP X Koala looked so good on that last game, and uh, I think it's a good ban. Make him show you something else. Play a little bit different. Tyrant. Yeah, and uh, back on the bands, they actually take away the uh, Sejuani. So, <clears throat> they obviously not wanting to play against that again. And then, <clears throat> also the Aurelia, which is just a really strong overall mid and top lane pick. So, not too surprising that they get rid of that. What? It changed to Lissandra. Oh, wait. It was Aurelia. I, I watched it with my eyes changed. <laughs> what is going on, Mark? Uh, I guess when your internet dies in the middle of changes, <laughs> like, the game likes to play tricks on you. Oh, boy. Uh, well, I think the Sejuani is a smart band from K-State. It's kind of a big neutralizer. Um, playing those tanks, you don't have to show a lot of skill. So if, uh, if UKPX Koala just wants to pop off, Banning away those things that are safe for the other jungler uh, will allow him, I think, to even grow a bigger lead this game. So we'll have to see what they end up picking up. <clears throat> that Ziggs pick is definitely interesting. I'm not really sure. Is that going to go mid and then they're just going to put the Jace in the top lane? That's what it's looking like to me. Um, I think the Jace pick is actually so bad for this matchup. Um he might be able to pressure with a, a little bit more range on his autos, but it, he cannot switch forms and go in if Urgot has anything up, because as soon as he does that, he's just going to get flipped into a, uh, a W, and he's just going to die, pretty much. So, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, and there's the big balls coming through for UKPX Koala playing the Kha'Zix. I think Kha'Zix is so busted right now. Probably one of the premier junglers I'm looking to pick up. And Nocturne. Yeah, Nocturne. Nocturne for the side of Central Missouri. That, That's actually, that, a, uh, I think Nocturne is a really good pick for them, honestly. Very easy to execute, clear. Um, it's just a very, like, simplistic champion in terms of what you need to do to be successful, which I think is probably good for them. 
And it looks like they're going to throw Lucian actually into the top lane. I like that a lot better than the Jace, but uh, um, that I breaks up the Lucian Brom synergy. Because he is taking heal and the Jace is taking top uh, lane. So. Okay. Thanks for <laughs> as much as catching I that out on that me. Lucian might actually be better. I, I think I think it. that lineup, if it was in position, would be ideal. Yeah. Yeah. So now we get to wait for the awesome three minute delay, and then another two more minutes after that. So. Yikers. Yeah. If anybody has any questions in the chat, feel free to ask. Um, yeah. Once again, Kansas State will be on the left side this game. If you are. Uh, Unsure who they are. Vibon in the top lane. UKPX Koala in the jungle. Algu in mid lane. Demon Print at 80 carry. And Maximus 127 at support. And actually, none of these players this year are uh, seniors. So they uh, should all be returning to Kansas State next year. So that does hopefully bode well for their uh, continued progress as players. Yeah, I think um, this matchup should be a lot more entertaining than uh, last matchup. A lot more volatile, at least. I think either team could uh, run over some people <laughs> with the way these lanes look. Um, Nocturne's going to look to farm to six, but once he does, uh, can join those fights from uh, quite a sizable dis distance. So um, might be able to turn some fights that were going poorly in the previous game. Yeah, and uh, the Kha'Zix pick is something I'm definitely going to be interested to watch. It's not really that similar to Graves. I think he has to do a lot more in terms of um, getting successful ganks off if he wants to snowball his lead or killing Nocturne in the jungle. It's not really right. a champion that you can just perma farm on and get a lead that way. So I'll be interested to watch. I think that Kansas State actually has a very good draft, assuming that they don't get um, ripped apart in the early game by the Lucian Braum or the Jace. But yeah. I think Ezreal Morgana is a pretty good lane into that. They have a lot of safety with the Black Shield and the Arcane Shift, so it should help a lot with ganks and stuff. Yeah, I think K-State actually had a really good draft here. They probably have probably the four strongest, some, some like four of the strongest uh, solo queue champions right now with the Ezreal, Cassiopeia, Kha'Zix, and Urgot. <clears throat> yeah, I totally agree. <clears throat> so we got about so the... two minutes and 30 more seconds. <laughs> so After that... we uh, oh. go into loading screen, I'll probably switch it just to that uh, I to the transition screen, so just go ahead and wait around for two minutes, and then we'll get right into the game. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. We'll be right back in about two minutes, so don't go anywhere.
All right, guys, we are back with game two. Uh, we got about 30 seconds to wait, and then we'll get started with the game. Uh, for those of you who just tuned in, uh, Kansas State is on the left side. Vibon, UKPX Koala, Algu, Demon Print, and Maximus. They will be the blue team. And on the red side, we have uh, University of Southern Missouri with It's Shank, the Night Ranger, Saddam, not going to read that whole name, uh, Shin Man, and Tyrus. <laughs> uh, I think I was calling them Central Missouri last game. I just want to make a correction and uh, say they weren't trash. They were too trash to remember their full name. So, <laughs> I. Yikes. <laughs> Uh, as we get in the game here, um, what are some of the keys for Southern Missouri to turn the tides from their last game? Um, I think Southern Missouri really, really needs to win uh, mid bot early game. Although it does look like Kansas State is looking for an invade here. It looks like uh, this Morgana might be walking into this bush, and she may actually not be spotted at all. Jace is right there. I'm not sure if anybody knows. This could be a huge level one fight. Morgana is gonna face check right into this bomb. And it's instantly flashing away, but she does hit the bind on Jace. Jace flashes away. He is ignited. Will somebody call? Demon Print flashes forward, hits the first Q. Can he hit the second to get the first one? Oh, he misses the Q. Oh, but double flash forward and Vibon gets the kill with an auto attack. Yeah, that's always pretty scary to face check a Braum, but it ends up working out for K State. They get the first blood. Burn a lot of summoner summoners for it, but. Uh, that's uh, gonna go a long way to help uh, Vibon in this matchup top. It's yeah. really not what the Jace wants. Uh, no flash on him. I would not be surprised at all to see uh, UKPX Koala just go top and make sure make this Jace's life a living hell. For sure, for sure. But to be fair, Kansas State did burn Ignite and four flashes to get that. Down. So we'll have to see if the Night Ranger can take advantage of any of these flashes going down. UKPX Fall still does have his flash, so he may look for an early game uh, gank on this Jace who is flashless. Yeah, um, we'll have to see if Nocturne just elects to go and gank lanes. Uh, usually he wants to farm up to six as fast as possible so he can use that, but with all these flashes down, uh, we should look to see see him gank some lanes if he's playing correctly. We also may see an early game, sorry, an early game juggle fight. Uh, if UKPX Ball likes to look for this skull up, but he does appear to just be heading to the Raptors. So, or maybe the other. So, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually is going to be Zig's top versus Jace. Uh, or oh, versus yeah. Ergot. Which I think is a more favorable matchup for sure. Uh, the Jace Ergot matchup is uh, not great for Jace. Uh, unless he gets a really early lead. But uh, Ziggs has enough range and poke to be able to put some damage down on the Ergot. So we'll have to see how that pays off for them. Yeah, I have not seen too many Ziggs talks. Although it does look like. He's going in for a heavy trade here. He gets a pretty good trade on the Ziggs. Gets him to about half HP. We may see a dive come up because of this. But Nocturne is in the area, so... Could be interesting to watch. Ziggs does have Flash, and Ergot does not, so... We'll see. Yeah, we'll have to see if what K-State decides to do. Cassiopeia is also rotating up. And there's the Flash right there, so... This wave is actually uh, gonna oh, crash, him, but we've got to fight in the mid lane. Flashless. She's trying to kite back with the Q. She hits the Q. Kha'Zix jumps in. He's going to get feared, though. They do hit the ground. Algo steps a little bit too far forward. Almost dies. Ergot, though, is... I think this Jace is just dead. Yep. Dies to UKPX Koala's W. Yep. And they give, give the kill over to UKPX Koala, uh, which is going to be super good for them. Getting that Kha'Zix ahead, he can be able to duel almost anyone. They do get the heal also out of the bot lane with a nice Morgana bind, so... Yeah, that was a very uh, fortunate uh, play from Kansas State. I think that definitely could have gone worse for them, though. Halgu got yeah. pretty caught out there with no flash, and I'm surprised that he didn't get bursted before he could uh, do anything. Yeah, especially uh, not probably kiting the best there. Um, 
took a step too far forward and almost ended up uh, costing him his life, but was able to get out with a little bit of health and it ends up being a really good play for Kansas State. Yeah. And we may see a... Oh, no, never mind. I was going to say, we may see a dive in the top lane here, but it does look like Claw is likely to just recall. He is pretty low HP, so... He's just going to go ahead and get his dirt line. He has a pretty big advantage for himself already. He's only up like 300 gold, but he's uh, got a kill, and that Urgot is very, very far ahead of him. Yeah, especially with that first blood, um, which he hasn't ended up spending yet, but once he gets back to base and uh, is able to spend that gold, he'll be really far ahead of the Ziggs. Yeah, right now he's just perma-shoving that Ziggs in there. <laughs> Some nice trades going down in the bot lane. Definitely a more, I would say a more aggressive bot lane coming out of the University of Central Missouri, so we may see a little bit of action down here soon. But I think especially once that Nocturne hits 6. Absolutely. That's when uh, the University of uh, Southern Missouri really wants to fight. And we got to fight in the jungle? Yeah, UKPX Koala jumps in, use the challenging smite. The Night Ranger spell shields nothing, but UKPX Koala does not want to flash forward to try and see that kill. Yeah, he's able to force him out. Uh, probably end up costing him his bot side jungle camps. So, uh, good advantage for UKPX Koala. Vibon is very low off these trades, but he does have his ultimate, so he may be able to snipe out the Ziggs. But if Ziggs hits 6, he could be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, uh, he could always elect to uh, spell book. Uh, it usually comes up right around the time you hit 6, so he could end up taking a heal or something just to push that wave in. But it looks like he's just going to back here and uh, go spend some of that, finally spend that first blood gold that he got early in the game. And the gold that he's amassed since then. Yeah, he does go ahead and take his recall. He does not appear to be using his teleport. Oh. Yeah, that wave's gonna crash back towards uh, mid, so. And Hard while that was happening, back towards him. UKPX Koala did manage to solo an Infernal Dragon, so that is definitely a big advantage for Kansas State. <sighs> he's actually. The Night Ranger is pretty under level, I feel like. Level 5? I mean, I guess not, not that much, but... Yeah, there's jungle XP nerfs. Yeah. <laughs> Coming <laughs> through, it makes it a lot harder to play the Nocturne and get to that level 6. Alright, uh, it's okay, they deserved it. <laughs> 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 yeah, my junglers cost me all my games. Yeah. The game is jungle diff, so, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, look at the CS. Pretty decent. Oh wait, we're not actually looking at the wrong enemy. Just kidding. He immediately flashes with nothing coming out. Still gets bound, but he's under turret. So he yeah, unfortunately that uh, Miasma didn't come out and ground him quite fast enough for him to not have the flash, but uh, burns his flash afterward anyway, so we might see a return gank um, by UKPX Koala returning to go to that mid lane and... Uh, See if they can take advantage of that flash being down. And Jace also does look like he's gonna have to burn his teleport here because the lane is frozen against him. So yeah, we definitely may see uh, this uh, cause a slick to play on this Jace. He's actually liking not to teleport, which could, is gonna cost him a decent amount of CS. I think. He may yeah, have already I, lost it some. It's always really rough in that position. Um, I think. Personally, for me, when I'm playing in top lane and I, it's frozen, I just walk back because I know I have no flash. Oh, we're going to see a fight in the jungle here. He's going to get... Oh, he actually clears the red buff instead of the Kha'Zix. So Kha'Zix is going to pick up that kill. He steals the red buff with the spike. They got the Orga ulti on the Jace. He's going to fall. I don't think the kill will hit the Jace. He's going to be running away for his dear life. He might look for a dive here, but he flashes away, so nothing's going to happen. Yeah, really good fight from K-State there. Uh, UKPX Koala just showing his power and how much further ahead he is of this Nocturne. Uh, yeah. With no fear invading and able to f find a kill before everybody else arrives. And also a really unfortunate miss. Uh, oh, actually, real quick, Vaughn is going to go ahead and drop the ulti. The Black Shield is on Jace, is teleported behind. Demon Prince is going to fall to the Jace, and Jace may pick up another kill on this Morgan. He's going to. Oh, the Bind barely misses. They may have done that kill with their turret. 
That is a huge teleport coming through for University of Southern Missouri. Uh, that's what I was trying to talk about earlier. When you see a dive in the top lane. Yeah, another easy dive. This Ziggs is just getting completely abused right now. There's nothing he can do. He's looks like he's trying to build Rod of Ages. He is down 40 CS. He no teleport, no flash. This Cosmic can just come up here and kill him whenever they feel like it. Yeah, this matchup does not get any easier at all. It's just an Urgot it, it ult into a uh, Kha'Zix QW and he's dead uh, pretty much. But we're seeing that the Ziggs pick against the Urgot is uh, maybe not working out so well for them. Yeah, and really the only uh, the only thing that University of Southern Missouri has going for them is that nice teleport play from the Jace. But he is also down almost 40 CS as well, so... Definitely not looking great for University of Southern Missouri. They needed to get a good grasp in this early game, and they're already so far behind before this knockdown has had a chance to even hit them. Yeah, Maximus ends up uh, hitting a bind there in the bot lane, breaking up that back, and Lucian actually elects to stay after getting hit by the binding. But he's got no mana, he's half health. Uh, we might see them try to take advantage of uh, Lucian being down uh, all that mana. With a wave shoving. He can base four, looking for uh, jumps onto the Jace. The Jace actually knocks him on a turret. He does that, he looks like Cosmos is gonna die to the knockdown, and this is gonna be a pretty unfortunate one. Oh, he fl actually flashes away, turns the ulti. The Ziggsult comes in, and it's gonna miss. Honestly, a pretty good play by the Jace there, getting caught out. Uh, lands a nice knockback under tower uh, to get the trade kill after the Nocturne ult. And that's a nice shutdown. Uh, Jace is honestly, minus the laning CS, has made some nice plays for University of Southern Missouri. Yeah, and even being 40 CS down, Jace is pretty much even in gold with this Casio. Really, really, really nice E from him in order to get that trade kill. And that is not worth if you can't stay at all. Uh, UKPS Koala had a massive shutdown that was given away to that lock room. Yep. Uh, we just see the Urgot just got perma shoving the Ziggs in. Uh, yeah, this Ziggs is not having a good day. Yeah, I, I think uh, now it, with the turret plating um, getting even more ahead, this Urgot is. Oh, Jace may jump in. Cassie does not have ulti or flash. It looks like she's going to fall. And yeah, she falls to the W. And, but it looks like it's going to be traded back. And the bind hits, he fails to spell show it. He has no flash, he's gonna fall into Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix is gonna look for this bomb as well. Bomb does drop the Unbreakable and jumps to the Lucian, so he's gonna be okay. <laughs> Kha'Zix doing so much damage with just the QW auto. Ends up uh, basically one-shotting for the Nocturne. Thing. Yeah, this Kha'Zix is so, so far ahead right now. And a couple of key mechanical misplays coming from the Night Ranger with that fear on the red buff and that miss spell shield to get bound there is definitely costing him big. Really makes you wonder if he feels comfortable on that champion or not, or if they just picked it uh, for the team comp, but um, definitely does not appear to be very comfortable, and he's just getting forced out of this jungle yeah. now. And he takes squad jumping in, oh my god, Holy. he does so much damage. The electric cube with a full combo goes zero to hundred. So UK Squall uh, completely owns this jungle. Jace having to flash away from that line. Looks like they may look for a dive now. He's not even under his turret. He has nowhere to run. Well, gun is dropping. The UK Pick Squall steals the kill before the Urgot <laughs> ulti can even grab him. Yeah. Yeah. This... And this Kha'Zix is just so far ahead. Should be able to just take control of this game and go to pretty much any lane and just one shot everybody. Yeah, That's UKP kind of the X is eight and one at thirteen minutes, so definitely controlling this game. Nocturne goes in actually from Ulti on the one. She pops the Zonia, she may live. No, she does not. And he still has the fear. He may actually 1v2 this. Urga is gonna fall as well. It burns the flash completely wasted. 1v2 kill. Shutdown too. Yeah, and yeah, and a shutdown goal. That was actually huge for him. Pretty well played, honestly, by Maximus. Not a whole lot he could do. Uh just yeah, they just should have backed off there, honestly, because yeah. There's a nice play from the Nocturne. I, it might be a little too <laughs> too late to do anything with uh, UKPX Koala being so far ahead. Yeah, another dive coming in. UKP misses the jump, but it doesn't matter. He's so far ahead. 
Shin Man blows his flash, dies anyway. This Ziggs has... I th don't even think he's completed uh, his rod. Oh, he actually just he finished just his rod. It. <laughs> 14 minutes. Oh, the Night Ranger. I'm not sure you want to run at this guy. He is so strong, but he does have Jace backing him up, so... Yuki PX Quad does not want to take that fight. And this is really good for K-State. I think the uh, Kha'Zix pick is a really smart draft, considering... He can one-shot, especially when he's this far ahead, anyone on the team uh, from University of uh, Southern Missouri, except maybe the Braum, but they're all so squishy that he can just take any fight he wants if they... Oh, and the Night Ranger blows his skill shield again too early and still gets bounced. That kill's gonna go over the Urgot. The Ezra will be just, just to disrespect, but uh, yeah, <laughs> this, this Nocturne does not seem particularly comfortable on this channel. His spell shields have not looked great this game. And yeah, University of Kansas State just completely controlling the boss of Another time line. This man cannot miss a line. <laughs> Looking like Hakuo <laughs> over here with the Morgana play. Yeah, no. They're just completely controlling the game. Jace looks like he wants to try and force them out, but Urgot is actually behind him. He may get collapsed here. He's trying to win and run away. He has no flash. The slow misses, though. So, But UKPX Squall back <laughs> at it again. And picks up another kill. Urgot actually grabs that one, but... I like how we're going through this game and we're just seeing slowly how much damage UKPX Squall. We get little measures. He just goes and solos someone. We see his damage slowly increase throughout this game. Yeah, eventually nobody's going to be able to take these kills from him because he's going to one-shot them with just a Q and an auto attack. <laughs> Yeah, once he gets uh, the Dusk Blade, it's going to be a lot of damage, uh, especially with that slow and that like extra 200-300 damage that comes through with Dusk Blade. And at the same time, you get the Explorer also secured the Rift Herald, so they're going to have that to look for potentially a push that could honestly break into the Enders at only 16 minutes left. Yeah, K-State's so far ahead here, um, getting those sideways pushing and then just pushing the mid lane with Rift Herald, I think, is a really advantageous strategy, especially there's since there's really nothing else for them to do. They could potentially uh, just team fight and look to get a lot off of a team fight since they're so far ahead with Rift Herald. Yeah, they're just completely controlling vision, completely controlling the jungle. But you can fix quads three levels, one Holy. shot, two people instantly. <laughs> flash heal doesn't matter. UKP follows with the flash. Double kill for him. This Kha'Zix is unstoppable. He he jumps on Lucian at 3 fourths HP and with just a normal auto takes him almost all the way down to zero. They do pop Doing so damage. much damage. And they secure that 2 for turn. They may look to just continue to push You think your explorer is actually going to solo the Infernal Drake. Bloodborne is... Looking to trade like this, they land a bind on the Braum, he does not, he flashes away, still dies to the, uh, the Cassiopeia spin Yeah, and that bind Miasma is so... Oh, the bind flies from Maximus! Really, really well played. And Shin Man is gonna blow as well, the Nocturne <laughs> jumps in, he dies, they get the Infernal Dragon, they get the kills, they're gonna get this inhibitor, and this game is looking to be completely over. K-State might look to get these Nexus turrets down. Um, it's so early in the game, though, that these respawn timers are very, very low. Yeah, so, they, we'll see. they do appear to be going on to the Nexus turrets, though. The death timers are really, really low, but they are still three dead for not some time. Another time lane, the Blum has Unbreakable. It doesn't matter. Lucian gets stunned by the Cassio. He's going to fall. Jace is just running back into his fountain. He has no... There's nothing he can do. He gets bound as well. Algu hits the Q, puts the third thing, but he flashes away into his fountain. They are do appear like they're gonna be backing out here. Oh, yeah, they get both next. <laughs> you can't oh, is UKP the is gonna, gonna die? die to turret. <laughs> Executed. What a terrible thing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that's uh hashtag on monkey right there. Uh, but no the shutdown only... goes through. Oh, so. my oh. Boy. Ibon is incredibly strong as well. That's about the only stain he's had on this incredibly clean performance, though. UKPX Koala completely dominating this game. 12 and 2 technical, but uh, really unfortunate jump from there. 
Yeah, um, I have to say that uh, Algu has been doing really good with these Miasmas, um, and that bind into Miasma combo is just so hard to deal with, because uh, you can't flash out of it afterwards, and you just have to sit there and just tank the entire Miasma damage, um, which with Leandri's is, does so much damage from Cassiopeia. Yeah, and just a massive gold lead for Kansas State, 15, 16k. Baron is about to spawn in 10 seconds. They have double Infernal. This is pretty much the exact same situation for the University of Southern Missouri as it was last game. They have an inhibitor down. Baron is spawning. Kansas State is looking to immediately start that Baron. And I think their only chance here is for Nocturne to look for a steal, but he smites the red button. It doesn't even really want to get anywhere near that Baron. Yeah, uh, there's really not much that uh, University of uh, Southern Missouri can do. Um, at this point, I think their best shot is to get a Baron Steel, but not even in the area to even attempt that. So, uh, K State's just going to look to close out this game here, probably with one more team fight, especially with the base being cracked open with no Nexus turrets. Yeah, and it does look like Kansas State is running down the mid lane. Wyborn pops the Righteous Glory. e forward gets the flash from the Blink. They are just absolutely terrified of this game. They are so far ahead, there's nothing they can do. They don't have the wave clear to deal with these Baron bot minions. This turret should shortly fall. Wyborn is a nice bind for Maximus from the far of the game, but it doesn't look like he's going to die. Ziggs drops the ulti just to try and get them to pack up. Oh, the snipe Urgot ult, but he's not low enough to die. The Night Ranger just gets soloed out by Algu. Hits the stun and the bind. Well, Maximus pops the zone to avoid that. He's ignited. He's going down. Casio has the double kill. Maximus is going to die to a Braum ult and ignite. But Casio may pick up a triple kill and kill here. Will she look for more? Oh, Kajuke Gig Squad jumping in, one shotting them both, they're both dead, everyone's dead, ace for Kansas State, the Nexus is open, this game is going to be over, Kansas State with a clean 2-0 victory in their first game of the season. K-State just saying full send in both games, ends both games uh, before 25 minutes, just utter domination from this Kansas State team, playing really well today. Yeah, um, just not even close at all. You got an MVP for the series, Mark? Um, I think if I was going to give MVP to anyone, it would probably be UKPX Qual for this really, really strong Game 2 performance. Um, but honestly, everyone on Kansas State played extremely well. Maximus had some really, really clutch binds. Algu was really good with his Miasmas and ultis. Vibon was dominating top lane. And Demon Print really didn't get a chance to scale up so that he could uh, shine on that Ezreal pick. But, I mean, I'll take the free win if I were him. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice to feel carried in the bot lane. You don't have to do anything at that point, you know. And we uh, actually may be able to get real quick. Give me just a second. We may be able to get a quick interview with uh, some of the players from Kansas State. Give me 30 seconds, and I will be right back. Mark the pro. All right. Congratulations. We actually have all five of the Kansas State players from today's game. Congratulations on the win, first of all, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Hey. No problem. I can tell you guys are really excited about that win. Um, just for my first question, uh, UKPX Koala. Uh, honestly, dominating Game 2 Kha'Zix performance, uh, you pretty much completely destroyed that Nocturne. But I do have to ask a question. Um, you did appear to have a bit of a misstep on that jump over the turret. <laughs> I'm just curious what was going through your mind in that moment. 
Uh, that's just tradition, honestly. He does that in every single scrim. So. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah. it's it's like uh, you have to do it. <laughs> so, you, so you did yeah. that on purpose, is what you're saying. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> just checking. Just checking. Okay. Uh, next question to, to Vibon. Um, what did you think of the uh, Ziggs top pick? Honestly, it looked like you were uh, um, having a pretty easy time against that, especially with those uh, jungle dives. But I'm just curious what your thoughts were on the pick. Uh, the pick was pretty spicy. I think it would have been better if they did Zig bottom and then sent Lucian top. Um, the lane itself against Ziggs was pretty easy, though. Just he doesn't have much options to get away if you can dodge his uh, satchel. So... Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Um, Algu, uh, honestly, really, really strong uh, game on your Casio. Uh, really good miasmas, and you hit m most of your Qs that I saw and got stuns on most of your ultis. Do you feel like Casio is a champion that you have a lot of comfort on, or what was the reasoning for you guys behind that pick? Um, I'm really flexible, so I'm kind of comfortable on literally every single champion in the game right now. <laughs> so... Uh, we just kind of roll a die, and whatever champion it lands on, really, I just go for it. Okay, okay. You roll, so you roll a die, and you pick your champion that way. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. I see. I like that he you go with the uh, uh, version. Like they don't have it in the game for you, right? There's like no rand. Oh, I think there is a random button for you. You don't have to use a die. Is that awkward for you now that you know that? Uh, it's, it's been a little bit of a struggle, but we, as a team, we can get through it. Okay. Okay, okay. Now let me go, uh, to, uh, Maximus. Uh, this, as far as I know, this was your first, uh, competitive game that you actually played. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. So I'm just curious how you feel after getting, uh, that first competitive win. Honestly, a very strong performance. Uh, I don't think you missed a bind the whole game, as far as I can see. Uh, and some really nice flash plays and really good baits with your Zonyas. So, how do you feel after that win? Uh, I felt pretty good. Yeah, we, we had full control the whole game. I uh, got a lot. Yeah, we just always had map control and felt good. So, Cool. Sounds great. And uh, finally, uh, but last but not least, Demon Prince. Uh, you know, the Ezreal pick didn't really get a chance to shine because... Uh, the top side of the map was uh, a little bit too far ahead, but I do know that you used to be a mid main. So, how do you feel about this switch to AD carry? And then, how are, did you think the games went? Uh, switch to AD carry has been it's been a work in progress. You know, have those rough games where you just kind of int, but you know, <laughs> improvements there. And then the games overall, I felt like went pretty darn good. I mean, obviously we got the two zero. And everyone just kind of won their individual matchups really hard. And even the Ezreal pick, I thought was like, I got to do my part because Maximus was just able to roam like all of the second game, and I can just easily farm with Qs without having to worry about them like getting on to me. Yeah. And then, uh, how did you feel just about the games overall? Pretty well. I mean, we didn't really have to like do a whole lot of thinking macro wise because we were just able to beat them individually and then transition that lead from there cool 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 uh lane do you have any questions that you want to ask the guys not really a really clean series from you guys uh quite a stomp in both games so well played gentlemen all right uh, any last things any thoughts that you guys want to add before we uh end the stream yeah, what do you have to say to all the fans out there be sure to tune in next week. We have another match next week, I think. So, <laughs> same time. Yeah, same time. Saturday, either. 3 o'clock. And buy our merch. Too. Oh, buy your merch. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for, the, thanks for your time. Thanks for the interview. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, that is going to be it for me and from the stream. Uh, just so everyone knows, like uh, Algu said... Next week, they have their second match of the season, Saturday at 3 p.m. Central Time. So if you want to tune in then for their second game. But uh, other than that, thanks for watching, uh, and hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.